Jewelry is often described as an accessory, and jewelry, especially trendier and cheaper fast fashion jewelry, is usually treated as an accessory business. As Tyler Matheson tells us, that's changed since two young entrepreneurs from New York City got the bright idea to start a company that makes fast fashion jewelry its primary business. We knew that this earring was going to be successful within the first 48 hours of it going live. Amy Jane and Daniela Yakubowski do their homework. How else could they have sold millions of on-fashion, hip, in-the-moment bangles, earrings, and necklaces for $30 to $250 a piece? Within a few days, we'll have an idea for what she wants within that trend. She is Bubble Bar's typical customer, someone not unlike New Yorkers Amy and Daniela. We're really looking for that 25 to 40 year old woman who wants on trend novelty fashion jewelry. The two began shopping together with abandon soon after meeting on the job in finance a little more than 10 years ago. They moved on to business school at Harvard, continuing their forays to places like Saks Fifth Avenue, where they found themselves in the summer of 2009. Amy just turned to me out of nowhere and said, would you ever buy jewelry from this place? And I sat there for a minute and I said, huh, no. And the fact that the two of us had never gone outstairs and bought a pair of statement earrings or bracelets uh, made us kind of question who was. Aiming to figure out who she yeah. is, oh, they began quizzing fellow students on their shopping habits and talking to wholesalers about turning <laughs> product around, building a case to create a business, a brand around fast fashion jewelry. They put up about $20,000 each to build a website and began testing it after they graduated in 2010. We started getting all of these orders from women that we didn't know. And a few weeks later, they were coming back and making another purchase. It meant we were doing something right. She was loving the experience. Tens of thousands of pieces sold that summer, convincing Jane and Yakubowski to open a real business. But pitching venture capitalists, more than 90% of whom are male, wasn't easy. They, like, really didn't get it. The two kept at it, though, eventually finding women who not only got it, but invested, too. Bobble Bar opened officially in January of 2011. You're going to be told no a million times, but you really only need one yes. Graycroft's Ellie Wheeler was an early investor. Bobble Bar won't say whether it's profitable yet, but Wheeler says its performance has exceeded her expectations. They've done a fantastic job. Um, building the business. And it's a completely different business today, which it should be. Different because Bobble Bar, an online jewel, is now sold at Bloomingdale's, Nordstrom, Anthropology, and some 200 retailers around the world. They've expanded, too, on the lower end with Sugar Fix, sub $30 items sold in 1,800 Target stores, and on the higher end with a new line, Everyday Fine. We do also have one that has letters in diamond, and that's $1,000, pretty. And a lucrative new chunk of the business is coming from other fashion companies, hiring Bobble Bar to design products they sell under their own names. Yeah. Oh, that element of the business now is about 20%, 25%. Quite a nod to these shopping buddies, industry outsiders who've really worked their way in. Since 2011, Bobble Bar has undergone several rounds of funding. Included on the list of investors is the venture capital arm of Comcast, the parent of CNBC, which produces this program.